I check my watch. It's been two hours since I've been walking in my Salomon boots. I'm slightly edgy. The butterflies whirling around in my stomach. The winds aren't crazy. The high flaky clouds say it's a good day. I see one, then two jumpers walk towards the edge of the cliff and then vanish. It's my turn. For the nth time, prior to this jump, I check the pins and the pilot chute of my container and then put on my rig. I take a step closer to the edge. I feel the winds kissing my face. As I wipe my palms on my pants, I quickly go through a mental checklist of my dive before I take the next step into nothingness. As I do this, all the fears that had enveloped me slowly dissipate. I take a deep breath, pause, three, two, one. Those first few seconds, time feels infinite. When you're in a high-risk situation, your senses are heightened, you're more alert. This is real time. Those 15 seconds of free fall feels like eternity. The green specks and the brown spots are now slowly deciphered as treetops and boulders. And that's when I realize I need to deploy my pilot chute. The canopy extracts out of my container like a blooming flower. All thanks to the meticulous pack job I did the day before. I unstow my brakes and set my flight pattern for an uneventful landing. My feet touch the grass, maybe. I exhale. I look back at the cliff and there's a smile on my face. I am Sajid Chogle, an extreme aerial adventurer. I'm sure you're wondering where it all started and what did I do different? But let me start by asking you some questions. What is that one thing you do that makes you feel alive? That one thing that makes you feel more connected to your surroundings? That one thing that reveals you to yourself. For me, it was the fascination for flight, the feeling of jumping off a cliff or soaring through clouds, limitless and without boundaries, just you and nature. But setting course on a less trodden path wasn't easy. My aspirations were considered unrealistic by many. People said what you're doing is highly unrewarding with a high risk to reward ratio, especially in a society where we regard financial security over and above physical well being and mental well being. Extreme sports, in general, are looked down upon. Many consider it to be the dark side of the force. I hope there are some Star Wars fans here. But not all dreams are meant to reward you in a specific manner, in an established manner. They vary person to person. The biggest reward for me was the community I am part of today. Being brought up in a protective environment where marks and later professional success mattered more than anything, I was constantly bombarded by questions. Can't you be normal like everyone else? Why do you have to be a rebel? Are you suicidal? Grow up, be an adult. Do you have too much money? Are you making money through this? What about your family, your parents? But as I said earlier, not all dreams reward you in an need to reward you in an established manner. They vary individual to individual. To pursue these adventures required some planning and changes to my lifestyle. 
the first step was getting fit. That meant eating healthy, resting well, and living an active lifestyle. I started working on my basic fitness. The most basic activity I took up was running. While living in Philadelphia, I started commuting to work on my bicycle. Philadelphia also gave me access to a river. So I made, I took up dragon boat racing. The dragon boat racing team comprised of well-accomplished individuals, doctors, engineers, from different backgrounds. And the secret recipe was effective time management. My days then used to start at 4 a.m. just to try and maximize my whole day. I had to manage all my sports around my work schedule. I feel it's extremely important to create a routine for fitness. These were some of the gamut of sports I've been pursuing throughout these years. Training the body was easy, but training the mind took a lot more effort. Extreme sports need a lot of focus and concentration, as it involves split-second decision-making, especially during emergencies. You cannot let panic set in. You have to be able to plot your way out of a dilemma and plan on contingencies. And often, there are no second chances. But this keeps evolving as you progress deeper into these activities. Your mind learns how to contain fear and use it as an enabler. Exactly what I'm doing right now. Yes, I do love the adrenaline rush, but there's a method to my madness. Training and experience helps build an intuitive base to minimize danger. The next step was charting a financial plan so that I could fund these activities. I would love free jumps and fancy travels, but there weren't any sponsors or brands on board. It was just my passion fueling my drive. The training program, the certification, and the equipment required to pursue these activities are expensive. But there is a way. I figured, through research, I figured the amount of money that I would require to train, get certified, buy all this stuff. I figured out the best places where I could live and train for cheap. I started a bank account where only my adventure money would go. I cut out any additional expense that I was making, such as eating outside, electronics. I started buying secondhand stuff, no more partying, no more fancy clothes. No cars, uh, started walking and taking public, using public transportation as much as possible. Let me give you an example. There's a term called as Alamansraten. It's a Nordic term, and it means all man's freedom to roam. <clears throat> I learned about it in 2016 through a Swedish brother of mine. What it does is, it gives you free public access to the wilderness. So basically, you can go and camp in any public property in, in the Scandic countries or the Nordic countries. You can eat the berries of the trees, you can eat the fruits, and you can eat the fish of the water as well. As long as you don't exploit the region, you have to maintain an ecological balance. I've been doing this since two years, and it's helped keep my travel expenses to a bare minimum. I knew I wanted skydiving and base jumping to be a part of my lifestyle since I started both of them. So I, gar I, I garnered enough skill sets that would help me travel and work wherever I went for these activities. That's me filming a tam tandem jumper there. I started bartering my skill sets for food, for cash, for, jump, for jumps. And again, this has helped me sustain for the long run. The community and the connections were really helpful while doing this. I'm also into content creation. So what I constantly do is I, I create stories on extreme sport ideas and I pitch to different brands or to content portals who might be interested in sharing these stories about these adventures. I did manage to execute a few projects, but the sport is so niche in India that not many would want to associate with you. 
So as I said, it wasn't all Nutella and pancakes. There were also moments of doubts when I, when I thought if it would be better to have stability in terms of financials, career, and family. But then again, circumstances and challenges don't make you stronger or weaker. They show what metal you're made of. And every time I'm faced with this dilemma, I remember how I'm in one with myself and with nature when I'm experiencing it in its raw form. These experiences have had a calming effect to my mind and to my soul. I've started appreciating everything and everyone that comes my way and truly started living in the moment. It may sound a cliche, but it feels like I didn't choose the sport, but the sport chose me. There are some obvious health benefits when it comes to pursuing extreme adventures, as long as you don't land six feet under. Then again, awareness is key of the system and the elements. These activities help you stay focused and spirited. But to pursue them regularly, one needs to manage time more fruitfully. As Einstein had once pointed, moving clocks go slower. I hope I'm not growing old too soon. Nirodha is a word commonly used in yoga. It means suspended reality. But here you haven't suspended your mind and gone lax. You are completely aware. So after all, taking flight is not all that extreme. It is staying completely in focus and imbibing all that there is around you. Having gone through this whole transformation of that of a little boy with dreams to fly, to that of an extreme aerial adventurer, I feel anyone can do it. Passions are like maps. You reach your destinations no matter the weight of others' expectations. Don't let the mountains leave your eyes and the skies leave your heart. Adventure sports changes your perceptions about what you can do and can't. It helps you get out of the habit of enshrining your limitations and truly break free. Create a long-term plan and break it down into short-term goals. Work towards them. But this talk isn't about goal settings or about a kid's dream to fly or about romance. I know I didn't cover that topic. But it's about introspection. To truly begin living the life you want to live, and not the one you are told to live. There is no greater liberation than following your heart, and no greater reward than personal fulfillment. So be who you truly want to be. Find your own adventures. But remember, before convincing the world, you must be convinced yourself. Thank you.